Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pure Liberal Fire, October 26, 2010. My name is uh, Kyril Zantanovich. I'd like to talk about uh, what's going on basically today in Europe and even in the world. In uh, 1848, the Communist Manifesto said that, quote, a specter is haunting Europe, unquote. And what they actually meant by this uh, evil ghost is communism. And just as it was true back then in 1848, so too it's even true today, uh, more than 160 years later. Uh, Perhaps the exact proper name for the word communism, or the exact term should be welfare statism. It should not be communism. But it's really the same thing. It's, it's, it's basically a kind of a, a soft communism, which is not all that soft. And, and of course, uh, welfare statism is a kind of a massive attack on the economy, economy, but it's also a massive attack upon the society and upon the whole civilization and the culture. So basically what, what's happening right now in Europe with all these protests and everybody sort of protesting the... Uh, uh, demonstrating the uh, austerity measures which the, which the governments are sort of kind of uh, maybe thinking about undertaking. What this is is, is uh, basically they're protesting the fact that uh, welfare statism is gutting their whole society, their whole culture, their whole civilization, and they don't like it. The main people that are protesting are the ones that are, are basically um, uh, the parasites, uh, uh, the people that are the, that are the enemies of, uh, of Europe and European civilization and, and also of, uh, of Western civilization. These are the ones that basically, out of a kind of a stunning level of ignorance, because uh, you know the liberal era died out, the classical liberal era died out maybe like 200 years ago intellectually, and maybe as a sort of a cultural phenomenon, it died out maybe like 100 years ago. Uh, these are people that basically like somehow, or at least they think they like half socialism and half fascism, or if you don't like the word fascism, they like uh, progressivism, which is this business of... Uh, Maybe the government doesn't own the economy, but it, it controls the economy. So that's maybe the difference between socialism and, and fascism. I think that if you take a, take a look around, you have to draw the conclusion that Leviathan, this evil thing known as big government or big brother, it's growing. Uh, the deficit that everybody owes uh, is growing. Uh, the whole world is sort of turning into Greece. Even America is turning into Greece. And, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's desperate and, it, and it's hideous. Right now, there's this kind of a massive desire for an alternative to, uh, to the welfare state. For something or other like uh, capitalism and libertarianism, but I think you have to take note of the fact that the people that advocate uh, capitalism and libertarianism, uh, such as myself, are exceptionally and remarkably and stunningly incompetent. Uh, they don't ever seem to discuss anything which is central to the issues, and, and if you want to find any sort of hope in, in the right wing and the left wing, of, of course there's no hope in the right wing or the left wing, but even if you sort of li listen to the libertarians and the, cap and the objectivists, uh, even they don't seem to, to advocate... Uh, uh, they don't seem to advocate uh, what they're supposed to be advocating correctly. There's no mention of the fact that uh, we need to sort of change our... There, there's virtually no mention of the fact we need to change our moral code. We need to embrace something known as uh, what I refer to as the holy individual or the sacred self. We need to embrace something which is known as um, selfishness and greed. Uh, basically, if you're not 100% selfish and 100% greedy 100% of the time, you're a scumbag. It's as simple as that. You're a moral, you're a moral lowlife. But no one seems to, to talk about that. As far as advocating capitalism, libertarian go, libertarianism goes, well, no one really mentions the fact that we have to kill off, in America, we have to kill off Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, and all forms of charity. We need to kill off all sorts of government roads and government schools. We need to get rid of uh, uh, drug tyranny, prostitution tyranny, broadcast obscenity tyranny, and gambling tyranny. All, those are the top ten issues, along with maybe the 11th, which is Obamacare. But, but you really don't hear too much uh, of people talking about that. It's also important that we need to defeat the phenomena of the common good or the collective good. What needs to happen is people need to promote the individual good. If someone says that they're doing something for the common good, well, uh, that's a kind of a, a moral gar that's moral garbage, and it's kind of a it's a kind of moral treason. All these people that are protesting in Europe, they're basically saying that that, that they're standing up for the common good, but uh, of course they're liars and they're hypocrites. But even if they were, even if they weren't, even if they were actually sincere, that would maybe make them worse, not better. So uh, these people are basically parasites that are protesting nonstop in Paris because, you know, the retirement age is going up from 60 to 62, or in, or in, in Greece they have some sort of a nightmare system and, and, and there's a small amount of uh, effort being made to improve it. I think that uh, it's also worth noting that the people that advocate freedom are, are very poor in the sense that they all, they all seem to speak up for such things as democracy and peace. And democracy is garbage, what we need is liberty, peace is garbage, what we need is justice. And, and the advocates of uh, the, the alleged advocates of small government and uh, freedom, they also say things like uh, they champion autonomy and self-rule and political correctness and multiculturalism and diversity and inclusion and sensitivity. But they don't really advocate what we really need, which is individual rights. Everything that I just mentioned is garbage, believe it or not. Democracy is, is garbage. Peace is garbage. 
uh, autonomy, self-rule, same thing, political correctness, multiculturalism, the same thing, uh, diversity, inclusion, inclusion and sensitivity, it's all the same thing. And these are all uh, grotesquely mis mistaken social ideals and political ideals. And even if they weren't, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be using um, political coercion to sort of set up your um, ideal social system or economic system. I think uh, I've, I've already mentioned these people are basically protest pro are, are basically parasites. All these people that are protesting, they're basically grifters and hustlers. They want to steal from the government. They basically want to steal from the masses. And in case you can't sort of figure out all these people that are protesting in France or wherever, they they want to steal from you. They want to sort of ruin uh, your life. I think if you see all these protesters, the one thing that sort of stands out is the sort of a remarkable and stunning level of human ugliness and obscenity uh, that sticks out. You sort of want to vomit. I mean, the welfare state, along with its many other sort of marvelous, wonderful qualities, it basically makes you hate your fellow man. It makes you hate humanity. It makes you lose all hope. It makes you think that human beings are basically slime. Well, human beings are fine. Human beings are actually good people when they live in a system of laissez-faire capitalism. But if you reduce them to the level of a welfare state, like in Britain or France or Germany, or even worse, like in, uh, you know, the Soviet Union, Russia or China or, or North Korea, and then yes, they become they become sort of like uh, uh, they, human beings end up, end up becoming monsters. They become beggars and thieves, and uh, they become animals. They even turn into feral beasts. So you, you see that the protests, and you just you feel sick in your heart for uh, for humanity. But you know, however however stunningly ugly and obscene that display is, that's not human beings. That's that's only human beings when the, when we're stuck in the welfare state. I guess the main thing I would like to say to sort of conclude is, to, is a sort of tip of the hat and a, 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 a sort of a very fine thank you to Marx and Lenin for all the great things you did. And certainly to all you fine, wonderful economic thinkers. It's not like every last one of you was morons so I, and, and low life. So I really do thank John Maynard Keynes for all your great economic insights and uh, John Kenneth Galbraith for all your great economic insights and Paul Krugman for all who was until recently the Nobel Prize winner. I, I really thank you because you, you know you're such geniuses, uh, the way you justify the welfare state. And also, I guess a tip of the hat to the 1930s New Deal from uh, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the 1960s uh, Great Society from uh, from Lyndon Johnson. So you guys, uh, uh, you guys did something great too. I have a book up here which is uh, Thomas Hobbes writing a book called um, Levi Leviathan. And I think it's worth noting that in the welfare state, you basically create something which is known as a, as a kind of a civil war. Thomas Hobbes referred to it as, quote, a war of all against all. And that's pretty much what we have. What we have. It's, a, it's the destruction of the harmony and uh, cooperation of human beings. It's, it's the destruction of human solidarity. It's the destruction of the brotherhood of man. And uh, under, under this sort of welfare state, what we end up with is what uh, Thomas Hobbes referred to as a life which was, uh, quote, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And, and that's our world uh, under the welfare state. We need to smash, trash, destroy, and, and annihilate once and for all the welfare state.